we want to find the area of the region which is inside the polar curve given by r equals five sine theta, graphed here in blue, but outside r equals four, graphed here in red. So in this problem, we're given the graphs of the two curves. If we weren't, we'd have to create these using technology or make a table of values to sketch the curves. Now our goal here is to find the area that's inside the blue circle, but outside the red circle, so we're trying to find this area here. Now to find the area bounded by two polar curves, we use this formula here, where r sub two is the outer radius, and r sub one is the inner radius, and alpha and beta would be the upper and lower limits of integration, normally determined by the points of intersection of the two curves. Where this angle here, passing through this point of intersection, would be alpha. This is where we start integrating. And this angle here, passing through the second point of intersection, would be beta. And we determine these angles by setting the two equations equal to each other. However, in this case, since this area is symmetrical across the y-axis, instead of using this angle here for beta, which is terminal in the second quadrant, we could stop integrating here at pi over two radians, as long as we double the area to find the total area. So in this example, we use pi over two radians for beta instead of this angle here, which should make the substitution easier later, as long as we double the area. And notice that two times one half would just give us one here in our formula. But we still have to find this angle here, which occurs at this point of intersection, and to find this angle, we set these two equations, solve for r, equal to each other. So to find alpha, we want to determine where five sine theta is equal to four. So if we divide both sides by five, we have sine theta equals four fifths. And now we'll take arc sine or inverse sine on both sides of the equation to solve for theta. So inverse sine of sine theta equals inverse sine of four fifths, which gives us theta would be equal to inverse sine of four fifths. Notice how this sine function value is not going to give us a nice reference angle or an angle we can find on the unit circle. So at this point, let's use the calculator and get our decimal approximation. Let's first make sure we are in radian mode. So we'll press the mode key. Notice how radian is highlighted. So now we'll go back to the home screen. We'll press second sine for inverse sine four fifths close parenthesis and enter. So the angle is approximately 0 0.9273 radians. But instead of using a decimal approximation, we'll go ahead and leave angle theta as inverse sine four fifths, which should be our lower limit of integration. So the area of the bounded region is gonna be equal to two times one half times the integral of, again, r sub two squared minus r sub one squared where the outer radius, r sub two, is given by five sine theta. So we have five sine theta squared minus r sub one squared, where r sub one would be just four. So we have four squared integrated with respect to theta from the lower limit of integration, which is alpha, which is arc sine four fifths, or inverse sine four fifths. And for the upper limit of integration, we're using pi over two radians because we're finding half the area, then multiplying by two. Now let's go ahead and begin simplifying this. Notice that two times one half is just one, so we have the integral of, this would be 25 sine squared theta minus 16 integrated with respect to theta from inverse sine four fifths to pi over two radians. Now I'll try this as two separate integrals. For the first integral, we'll factor out 25. So we have 25 times integral of sine squared theta. And then we have minus 16 times integral of, of course the one is optional. And I'll perform a substitution for sine squared theta. 
where sine squared theta would be equal to one half times the quantity of one minus cosine two theta. So we'll go ahead and factor out the one half. That would give us 25 halves times the integral of the quantity one minus cosine two theta. And we still have minus 16 times the integral of one d theta. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. When finding the antiderivative of cosine two theta, we'll have to perform a u substitution where we'd have u equals two theta, so differential u equals two d theta. So if we solve this for d theta, notice that one half differential u equals d theta. So when integrating cosine two theta, we'll have an extra factor of one half. So we have 25 halves times the antiderivative of one with respect to theta would be theta minus the antiderivative of cosine two theta is going to be one half sine two theta. And there we'd have minus, and then we'd have minus 16 times the antiderivative of one with respect to theta would just be theta. And now we'll perform our substitutions. When theta is pi over two, we'd have pi over two minus one half sine two times pi over two, which is just pi, minus when theta is inverse sine four fifths, we'd have inverse sine four fifths minus one half times sine of two times inverse sine four fifths. And then we have minus 16 times, when theta is pi over two, we have pi over two minus inverse sine four fifths. Well, sine pi is equal to zero, so this would be zero. So we have 25 halves times pi over two minus this quantity here. Let's go to the calculator and get a decimal approximation for that. So we have inverse sine four fifths and then minus one half or minus point five sine of two times inverse sine four fifths. So two second sine, four divided by five, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, and enter. So we're subtracting approximately point four four seven three. And then we have minus 16 times this difference so back to the calculator, we have pi over two minus arc sine or inverse sine of four fifths, which is approximately 0.6435. And this would be an approximation here. And I'll go back to the calculator one more time. So we have 25 halves times the quantity pi over two minus point four four seven three and then minus sixteen times point six four three five. So the area is approximately three point seven four seven seven square units. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.